The invention of earth movers revolutionized the construction industry, and Caterpillar is one of the pioneers of this idea. These giant machines not only supercharged construction work, but also played a crucial role in wars and tackled essential tasks during emergencies. It all started in 1914 when the Holt Manufacturing Company, one of Caterpillar's predecessor companies, launched a bulldozer blade in front of the machine that was controlled by a rope windlass fastened to the tractor's mainframe. They continued to make bulldozers, also known as dozers, in small quantities until they stopped production after their merger with the CL Best Tractor Company in 1925. In 1934, Le Tourneau entered into an arrangement with the Caterpillar Tractor Company as an official implement manufacturer for Caterpillar. Le Tourneau would design equipment for Caterpillar tractors and Caterpillar encouraged its wide network of dealerships to sell Le Tourneau's products. Therefore, in 1935, Le Tourneau moved his operations from Stockton, California to Peoria, Illinois, where he established a manufacturing plant near Caterpillar's. Latourneau had placed much trust and confidence in the crawlers made by Best, Holt, and then Caterpillar, as those brands of crawler tractors were used exclusively by his earth-moving firm. Caterpillar dealers took orders for their tractors to be built with Latourneau's implements, and when the tractor was finished at the Caterpillar factory in East Peoria, Illinois, it was moved by railcar a short distance to Latourneau's factory in Peoria to have the implements, such as bulldozers, installed. In 1937, Le Tourneau produced his first scraper without front wheels, a sight that is now familiar on all large earth-moving construction jobs. Le Tourneau was not alone in developing and manufacturing implements to be installed on Caterpillar tractors. The La Plante Chaute firm manufactured hydraulic-controlled bulldozers and other equipment for Caterpillar tractors. Entry of the US into World War II in December 1941 brought challenges to the Caterpillar Tractor Company. During the war, most of the company's production capacity was devoted to military products to meet the government's needs. As with Holt in World War I, Caterpillar licensed American Car and Foundry of Pennsylvania to fabricate Caterpillar's D7 crawler tractors to Caterpillar's specs for the military. Production of the military D7 model was in the neighborhood of 1,100 per month. Caterpillar diesel power units were in large demand by the military for field power. Fortunately for domestic manufacturers, at the close of World War II, the military did not ship the tractors and other construction equipment back from the theaters of war, but left them behind in the Pacific theater, often dumped overboard from ships into the ocean. Accordingly, the manufacturing of tractors and similar machines was not adversely impacted by war surplus equipment, and after the war, Caterpillar shifted its production back to the civilian market. Caterpillar was moving aggressively into the earth-moving speciality, since that was where the money was to be made. In 1941, it introduced a rubber-tired tractor, the DW-10, designed to pull scrapers and other similar implements. The advantage of this tractor over the crawler type was its speed in moving earth. Because of wartime demands, production of the DW-10 was suspended in 1943 and would not be manufactured again until 1945. The DW-10 pulled one of several implements. The Laplante Chaute CW10 Carry More, the Latorno Model LS Carry All Scraper, the Athi PD10 Side Dumping Trailer, and the Caterpillar W10 Bottom Dumping Wagon. The DW10 was intended by Caterpillar to be a direct competitor with Latorno's rubber tired scraper, the Tornapool, which had been introduced to the market in 1938. Caterpillar viewed Latorno's Tornapool as a threat to the dominance of Caterpillar's crawler tractor in the earth moving market. Although the two companies worked closely together during the major portion of the war, when their marketing agreement expired in 1944, it was not renewed. This released Caterpillar to manufacture earth-moving equipment that would compete directly with Le Tourneau across its product line. Yet Caterpillar did compete and beat the competitors. In a period prior to 1945, Caterpillar depended on suppliers who designed and sold earth-moving attachments, designed specifically for Caterpillar tractors. But in early 1945, Caterpillar took a step ahead and began developing its own line of dozer blades with respect to Caterpillar specifications and quality standards. Dozer blades originally came in straight, angling and U-shapes, both cable and hydraulically controlled. By 1945 in Peoria, Illinois, the first Caterpillar tractor with the new dozer blade was ready for heavy earth-moving tasks. 
Throughout 1945, engineers performed exhaustive tests on this new product at the company's proving grounds in Illinois and Arizona, and operators tested the attachments at various locations throughout the United States. The outcome of experimental and first production models assured that these new earth-moving machines would sustain and enhance the high reputation of Caterpillar products. The first shipments of Caterpillar track-type tractors with accompanying Caterpillar dozer blades were made later that year. The Caterpillar track-type tractor quickly became known as a dozer, and the legend was born. These machines worked on some of the modern world's greatest engineering projects, including the US interstate highway system, the Three Gorges Dam in China, and the winding of the Panama Canal, just to name a few. One of the earliest examples of a cat dozer was the 60 horsepower Caterpillar 60 crawler tractor that could be outfitted with a bulldozer blade. It started out as the CL Best 60 track layer in 1919, but was renamed after the merger with Holt and manufactured from 1925 to 1931. Caterpillar then began building the 45 horsepower RD6 and 132 horsepower RD8 in 1935, both of which dropped BRs in their names in 1937. Then there was the D7 in 1938, the D9 in 1955, the D10 in 1977, and the D11N in 1986, which was the same year the company incorporated and changed its name to Caterpillar Inc. Caterpillar dozers have been used for myriad projects over the decades, and some of those projects have even drawn crowds. For example, in 1977, the company used a highway project in Montana as the pilot test for its new D10 tractor, which had been through several prototype stages since 1971. That summer, Caterpillar claims, the D10 pilot test became the second largest tourist attraction in the country, trailing only Yellowstone National Park in attendance. The newly introduced bulldozer, along with many other existing products, were put to work by customers on major projects around the world, like the construction of more than 70,000 miles of highways throughout the United States and the construction of the Bakra Dam in India. In 1954, Caterpillar delivered 10 D9 pilot machines to customers throughout the United States. Those models were used for logging operations in California and Washington, road construction jobs in Nevada, Ohio, and Utah, dam construction in California and South Dakota, building an oil refinery in Washington, stone quarry work in Michigan, and jobs for a cement company in Illinois. The tests were so successful that, according to Caterpillar, one customer remarked, after observing your test model, we have confidence enough in your machine to place an order for 10 current production models. The dozer became part of popular culture due to its superior performance during World War II. American Admiral William F. Halsey once said, If I had to give credit to the instruments and machines that won us the war in the Pacific, I would rank them in this order. Submarines first, radar second, planes third, bulldozers fourth. Boss of the beach, said Army Engineers Chief Major General Eugene Raybould about the dozer, the indispensable all-purpose weapon of the engineers. What the World War II news coverage seldom made clear was that the bulldozer was not the tractor, but actually the steel plate and operating mechanism made by a supplier that was attached to a standard Caterpillar track-type tractor. During this era, it was not uncommon for companies to make earth-moving tools, such as dozer blades, that were specifically designed for Caterpillar tractors. Bulldozers from D1 to D3 in the Cat Dozing series fall in the same category. Don't let the size fool you. These machines are quick to move from site to site. With the right combination of speed, power, and accuracy, small cat dozers are versatile construction workhouses. Plus, the new grade technology has really made the small dozer valuable on the job site. D4 to D7 cat bulldozers are categorized as medium. Medium cat dozers deliver industry-leading fuel efficiency and easy maintenance features that reduce owning and operating costs. Next-generation models include factory-integrated cat-grade technology, plus you'll find the industry's first high-drive electric drive in this size class. Versatility is what these bulldozers are known for. The choice in powertrain and dozer blade configurations allows customers to tailor the machine to the application, whether it's a large fine-grading job to bulk earth moving. Dozers from D8 to D11 are giant beasts considered large. Large cat dozers are built to take on the world's most demanding work. Elevated sprockets increase productivity, simplify maintenance, reduce downtime, and raise final drives and powertrain components out of tough underfoot. The flamboyant history of cat dozers ends here. Share your thoughts about the history of cat dozers in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting updates on time game-changing machines.